Welcome back to the Compressor Guru. Thanks for coming back. Today we, we've been getting a lot of phone calls about extra air tanks and systems. And we found a lot of reasons to add reserved air. And we found one reason not to add air reserved to your system. And we'll hit that reason at the end of the episode. So stay tuned, we'll get to that last. But they're mostly pros. Now I have the electric guru here with me, uh, but... Looks like Santa Claus. That is not... <laughs> <laughs> that is not his only expertise. Because he was in, in the industrial world in manufacturing for so long, he has a lot of expertise in big air systems. Now Eric... What are some of the advantages, starting at the compressor room, to be adding air reserve to your system? Well, receiver tanks or air reserve will do a bunch of things for you at your compressors. Okay, One, it helps stabilize your pressure. So as your volume of use goes up and down, as you require more air or less air, those tanks will absorb that like a shock absorber and help steady state your air pressure. It also helps in larger systems to take any of the, uh, uh, what do I want to call it, the, the reverb from the big piston cylinders putting air into the system so you don't get pulsations in your pressure at point of use. It goes into the tank, comes out of the tank, again, acts like that shock absorber. So system stability in your compressor room is the biggest reason to add reserve tanks or receiver tanks or storage tanks. They're called any number of things, but uh, uh, to add that capacity at your compressor room. Right. Uh, we sold a 100 horsepower Quincy screw quite a few years ago. About 500 years ago, no, it was quite a while ago, we sold a 100 horsepower screw compressor from Quincy and the recommendation from Quincy was for every CFM of that compressor, which was 400 CFM, was to have at least one gallon in a reserve tank to make that cushion that Eric's talking about. So we sold them a 500 gallon tank that the air dumped directly out of the screw into the uh, reserve. And this was a skid mounted compressor and the controls, that machine would have not been very easy to control, it would have surged, it would have acted up, it would have started, stopped, it would have cycled super fast. Without that tank, the machine will not run right. Right, that pulsation in that pressure causes havoc in a control system where you're actually uh, uh, controlling to a pressure. Um, a lot of the systems we put in are, are you know, the compressor comes on at a lower pressure and shuts off at a higher pressure and your regulator controls your output pressure. Um, so, you know, there's different reasons uh, to have that receiver tank, especially in a, a flow system versus an on-off system. Um, now let's, let's stay at the compressor room, but let's step down a little bit to what some of my customers, the DIY guys, might be doing. By having the compressor mounted on an 80 gallon tank, and they have a couple other 80 gallon tanks, it is smart to run from the compressor tank into another tank, into the top, out of the side, into the top, out of the side, and every time you do that, you're adding distance and you're adding gravity to let that air settle down more and without using a dryer, without using an after cooler, you're improving the quality of air simply by uh, expanding the reservoir in the system and you could say we can do that with a giant tank. You could, but if you have one tank, that first tank that's on that compressor is going to get hot. When that air moves to that second tank, that air won't be as hot in that second tank. By the time it gets to that third tank, it's going to be even cooler. And every time that air cools down, you're going to drop more water out and improve the quality of the air. So this concept 
works whether it's on a 100 horsepower screw, uh, what were those Sendek? Uh, they were 2000 CFM. 2000 CFM. Uh, whether it's a 2000 CFM machine, a 400 CFM, or a 17 CFM machine that you might have in your body shop or repair shop. This concept works all through the scale of machines. The other side of that is that you now have more storage of high pressure air. So your volume of usage gets buffered by those tanks. So you actually reduce the cycles on your air compressor. You reduce that cycle time and lengthen it. So if you're storing air at 175 PSI yep. and the compressor turns on at 150, off at 175, but you're in a body shop and you're regulated to 90 PSI, you have more energy stored than you're using out because you're regulating it out at 90 PSI and you have extra energy stored, which increases the length of your cycle time, which is a good thing. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Okay. Let's try and say it another way. Okay. Okay. We get along. <laughs> oh. So, in the long run, generating the higher pressure and regulating it out as slower use actually increases the cycle time and is another way to add reservoir to the system by higher pressure and lower usage pressure. He couldn't have said it better. It's I, the best. I couldn't have said it. <laughs> uh, is there other reasons we're talking quality of air, efficiency of uh, the eliminating the pulse and using the air? Uh, what else do we need to think about in that respect? The positives. Point of use. Point of use. Point of use. So if you have a Let's say you've got a body shop, mm -hmm. and you have three bays, and your compressor's way down there. The guy on the end of that line gets the lowest pressure and the lowest volume. So, how can we eliminate that? Give him a reserve tank. Hey, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, if you put a tank sized properly, again, based on the usage, at that point of use, you improve, one, the quality of the air, Two, the pressure of the air, and three, the work output of that person, hopefully, because his tools aren't running down because the pressure drops. They're staying right there where they belong. And when the system turns on to refill those reserve tanks, he's really not seeing that system come on because the capacity's there, which allows him to continue to work. The compressors are working down here, which is where they're supposed to be. And once again, we're that 175, 150 pressure, and he's using it in air tools, which most air tools work best at, one, at 90 to 100 pound. If you look at the specs on any air tool you buy, they're going to tell you 90 or 100 pounds. We sell regulators. Regulators are important to improve the life of your tool. So, a question. Yeah. Is that air tank in addition to an air tank by the compressor? Yes. Yes. So, doesn't that mean the air compressor just has to work that much harder? Not harder, longer. Oh. So, if it runs a little longer and pumps up both those tanks, then it takes longer for it to have to come back on again. Correct. But everybody gets the right amount of air, not that poor guy down at the end whose tools aren't doing what they're supposed right. to do. I have a good example of this in a factory. There used to be a factory here in town that manufactured the cables that hold your end gate up. And I can't remember the name of the company, but we sold them a couple 10 horsepower Ingersoll screws. And their system was in, and after they were up and running for a couple years, they had a new machine at the opposite end of the building from the compressor room. And when that machine cycled, it couldn't work right. The solution was we put a 30 gallon tank at that machine and it wasn't a constant use of air but when it cycled it dropped all the line pressure everywhere and nothing worked right so by adding a 30 gallon tank the right size at the right place that machine cycled once every 10 minutes whatever it had to do and didn't affect the rest of the system and everything worked right again 
So you had an example like that you were going to talk about earlier. Yeah, well, there, there are times where you have machines that require a, a constant pressure in order to work. So if that machine's at the end of your line and you're feeding it with, with a, a sufficient line size, but you find that during production that machine does not cycle properly because the air pressure drops. That air pressure doesn't drop because it's outrunning your system, it drops because it's outrunning your piping and your line size for the volume that it needs. And, and it, the other usages that may be between point A and the problem spot. Exactly. So the solution is, uh, again, a point of use tank. You know, a, a 300 gallon tank stuck up in the ceiling, you know, air in the top, air out the side, and you have another point for, again, moisture to drop off if you have moisture in your air at that point. But your machine sees a constant pressure and constant. volume which allows it to perform properly without causing issues in the machines ahead of it because it's taken all the pressure away from them. And so he's talking about a properly sized system. Let's say your system was never properly sized. The tank solves your system even if you have an undersized system. A tank at the opposite end of the system will solve a lot of your problems anyway. It may not solve all your problems. But this is a possible solution for you. So, uh, how yeah. many tanks can you put on a compressor? <clears throat> how at, much room do you have? <laughs> at, at some point, you will find out that you don't have enough capacity from your compressors to keep those tanks full, which means you don't have enough compressor behind the system. But normally, if you can put a, a smaller tank at point of use, and a smaller tank at point of use, it, you could put several of those you know, in, through your shop or through your building and your system will stabilize. And it will also help you find out that you know, my compressor runs you know, 40 minutes and then it shuts off. And it's only off for 10 minutes and then it runs 40 minutes again. That's telling you that... You need a bigger compressor. <laughs> you need more capacity. We sell yes. compressors, folks. <laughs> <laughs> it's my personal belief everybody in America should own an air compressor. Or and, two. And I'm trying to solve that. <laughs> so, uh, now, that being said, Val brought this up, and uh, we're to a point where we're looking at how long a compressor runs, and we're, we're now near the end of the episode, and we're going to give you the answer, the one downside that you can hit by adding too much volume to your system. We got a call from a gentleman the other day and uh, we both talked to him on the phone and he had two compressors and one had a 60% duty cycle and the other had a 75% duty cycle and he was looking to add volume and he was looking to sandblast. And these were not big compressors, this was a five and a 10. And with that, do you want to explain the duty cycles and what the problems could run into by adding too much reservoir and running those compressors too much, because this is the electric guru. <laughs> Here we go. You're going to get your own <laughs> channel. It's going to be a spin-off. <laughs> uh, <coughs> channel, what I'm fishing in. Oh, um, so, if you're, when you look at your motors, your motors have a duty cycle, okay? And if your duty cycle is less than 100%, then you need to, that's what that's telling you, let's say it's 60%. So 60% of the time, so if you take an hour, 60% of that hour, you can run that compressor. The other 40% of the, the hour, you need to let that thing dissipate heat. Okay, because motors store heat. And if you store too much heat in that motor, you will follow the old adage of, you know, the, the electrical device failed because you let the smoke out. When the smoke comes out of the motor... The magic smoke. The magic smoke. When the smoke comes out of the motor, it failed. And it fails for a number of reasons, but one is people ask more out of that motor than what it was designed to give. So... If it's designed for 75% duty cycle, you know, looking at it in an hour, it can only run, 
45 minutes. 45 minutes. Okay. That, but That was already up on the screen. Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so that, that duty cycle tells you how long you can run your machine. That's on your motor. The machine itself, a lot of machines are designed around a duty cycle, but a lot of compressors are designed around a 100% duty cycle. They're designed to run, especially a screw or a centrifugal. They're designed to run 24 hours a day. Consequently, you need to have a motor that's sized to run 24 hours a day. And sometimes they'll even put a, a, a service factor on those motors that tell you you have a 1.25% uh, duty or uh, service, service factor. Factory. So your service factor allows you to overrun that motor. So what they're telling you is, look, we, we told you this is a 100 horsepower motor. We told you you can run it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But you know what? We build it a little better than that just to make sure you're not going to have a problem. Um, so the duty cycle is important. If you're running your compressor beyond the duty cycle of your motor, you're going to burn it up. You're burning life out of the motor. It may not go the first hour, but it will go if you keep it up. It will go if you keep it up. So that's the downside to adding too much reservoir to the system because you're going to increase your duty cycle to a point where you're going to damage motors. Anything else? Oh, there's all kinds of stuff out there. Holy smokes. Oh, <laughs> that's another episode, folks. <laughs> this is The Compressor Guru with The Electric Guru. And we want to thank you. And we are going to be back in the shop doing some repair work on a QT10, a couple of QR325s. Uh, and we're not going to spend the whole winter in the house. But uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment. If you have a question, leave it in the comments or contact us through thecompressorguru.com. And thank you. God bless. Have a great day. I'm sorry. I'm, I was getting bored over here. <laughs> <laughs> Pulsating pressure at the point of something. I was like, these are a bunch of pa -pa, pa -pa, pa -pa. That's That's all I want to say. It has nothing to do with your episode. You guys were just cracking me up and I was bored. Go ahead. <laughs>